I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're delighted to welcome David Saiga to our show. He is taking a deep dive into the study of end-time prophecies. In fact, he's looked into the phenomenon for three decades, driven by persistent questions and the quest for the truth. He has written an amazing book. It is called End Time Prophecies Amplified. In it, he offers a fresh perspective, urging readers to see through the Apostle John's eyes while emphasizing the importance of personal exploration and understanding. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Good River Print and Media for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel. David, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. I'm honored to be on here. I mean, I'm glad that you uh, picked me. I mean, I'm just a lowly person, and I'm just really excited to to be here with you. Well, you've written an intriguing book about end-time prophecies. Tell us a little bit about how this subject caught your interest. It's it's caught my interest for a lot of, really a lot, a lot of years. I mean, in my younger days and stuff, I've heard a lot of stories about it. You know, how, what, you know, some of these uh, horsemen's meant and what uh, the seals and the trumpets and all that stuff meant and all the spooky stuff. I mean, people started to come up with all these scary things. And then you got some, you, know, you got like two groups of people, you know, one that are into all the gory detail stuff. And you got the ones that, no, nah, I don't want, don't talk about it. You know, they just, you know, don't want to even hear about it and stuff, which is kind of a shame and stuff. I mean, I, I really feel that the Bible or the end time prophecy is vitally important for us to understand as an individual. And I tell straight up in the book, please do not believe me, because that's truly a disservice to you, the reader, or those that are listening. So it's because in the end, I mean, you have to understand and you know, you're supposed to guard your heart. Because, I mean, we can't believe everything we hear because there's a lot of crazy stuff that's going on right now. And it's going to get a little worse and stuff. So I just throw out a lot of nuggets and I base it on a lot of scriptures. But I also use a lot of historical evidence and facts of how we got to where we're at and in, in, in that aspect. So, so I, I, I look at it in a uniquely different way. And so and I think it's a uniquely different book. When you say that we should look through Apostle John's eyes when talking about the end, right. what was yeah. Apostle John's mission? What did he, or vision rather, what did he say the end would look like? Well, it would, it's, it's really would be difficult for him because he's a you know first century apostle. I mean, he's he's never seen you know some of the the wars that we we go we've been going through. I've, I've shared some, you know, military background myself. So, this, I mean, for him to try to explain a lot of stuff um, in his eyes, because first of all, we have to understand he was up on, he was up in heaven. God pulled him up to heaven to get him out of the picture because he needed to get out of the way of what's going on. And so, so he can show him what's going to happen in the world to come. And when describing, let's say, you know, for instance, that, uh, that uh, weird uh, insect, that uh, was uh, in chapter 12, and it was like, uh, it was just nuts. It's like, I couldn't imagine this insect, this locust or whatnot, and, and stuff. So it's like, what was he really, ex you know, describing and somebody? So I had to really dig deep to figure it out and stuff. And, and because he was in a different area, he wasn't on earth. He was up there looking down and stuff, and seeing all these things and, uh, you know how these things were flying over uh, pits of 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 of, uh, of smoke and stuff like this. These these weren't they, they weren't really, uh, as far as I can tell, actual insects and stuff. That didn't, he was really describing, you know, like a war machine, mm. and because because they the, had they had stingers on the front and in the back, and then he was describing you know how they had a chest of metal and then you had a, a face of a man and so so it was like really confusing so you know we have to not try to get all kind of sci-fi on the things of god so it's because he wants us to know these things i mean he's passionate i mean he, he he cares about us and stuff to get it so it's just you know seeing it in a normal uh common sense kind of way instead of trying to make it you know like hollywood would do mm -hmm. What um, 
what was it like writing this book for you? Tell us a little bit about what the process was like. Well, it was kind of interesting because it was kind of a long, I mean, we're talking years of process because in my office, I, 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 at, at eighth grade, my art teacher called me Marty Messy and stuff, but in my office, it was a disaster. So I had stuff all over the place, you know, notebooks and binders and stuff like this. And I never really thought about writing a book. I really didn't. I mean, mm -hmm. until one day I just felt God say, hey, you need to get this stuff organized. You yeah. got to put this together. So it's just like, you know, you, it's a mess, you know. So I thought, okay, fine. So I put it to, to you know, but, you know, buy all the stuff and got to organize stuff, and started typing it in and, and stuff like this. And then I thought, okay, I was done. And then, you know, God said, well, you're not done yet. I mean, you need to, you know, get it in a book form and stuff. And I still wasn't figuring, you know, publishing and stuff like this. And we got a local university. Uh, and I went there over there and got like 50 copies made and stuff like this. And uh, that was like one of the first times my wife actually looked at it and she was reading through it and stuff like this. And she was like really shocked and amazed. And she was like, oh my gosh, I mean, uh, you, you need to get this published. I mean, people need to know. I mean, I mean, wow. You know, I mean, I never really saw it like that. I mean, it was just, you know, my research and stuff like this. And she, you know, so she's kind of like the driving force for me mm -hmm. to actually get to where I'm at and stuff like this. And so this whole publishing thing is like totally different for me. It's like, I'm just in uncharted territory. And so getting this far is just a shock to me. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what you hope readers will take away from the book. I'm hoping some common sense and some truth that uh, God wants us to know. And it's not to scare people. That's the last thing he wants to, but he wants to, to us to be prepared to look forward, to anticipate what's going on. Don't be shocked or surprised and don't hide under a rock because it's going to get, it's going to get tough and stuff, but God will protect his own and stuff. And it's just getting us to really change our, our thought and our mind about God because there's so much confusion. I mean, we've got, there's literally, and there, there's hundreds upon hundreds of different times of, of uh, denominations out there that could be very confusing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and, I don't think God really intended for all that to happen. I mean, we're all supposed to be brothers and sisters, period. But I mean, he he cares about us and he wants us to be aware of what's going on and uh so that we can, you know, do what we need to do. We gotta get busy on what's going on. And um he he wants to be involved in our lives mm -hmm. and we've been pushing him out. Yeah, it seems like it's a time in our history where uh, God is not welcomed in a lot of hearts and in a lot of homes, unfortunately. And we see the results. We see very, you know, very abject sad. violence. We see, you know, um, terrorism. We see school shootings. We see some awful things. And I think that's the product of a godless society. So we do have to get God back into our society. Is there a time frame for the prophecy that you see? Uh I didn't put it in the book because I wasn't for sure if I should have and stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, for you, I mean, we have to understand what the generation that God talks about mm -hmm. and stuff. And like I said, I haven't covered it in the book and stuff. But God's generation is uh, is basically a hundred years and stuff. I mean, it's not confusing or stuff. I just he, he had a conversation with Abraham and he talked to him that four generations that his. Uh, uh, that they will be in captivity in Egypt. Um, but I mean, so his generation uh, is for, or is for a, a, a hundred years and what's we're in that generation. Mm -hmm. And we're, I mean, this generation that we're in right now is going to see the end. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, it's, it's around the corner. I mean, it's very, very close and stuff. And I don't want to, you know, try to tell you, you know, I mean, but we don't have a whole lot of time and stuff. Basically, do you, the, do you envision it peaceful? Do you envision it uh, joyous? Do you envision it violent? Do you envision it different for different types or different groups of people? I mean, it, well, it's it's going to be different for certain people. I mean, there's going to be you know for the believers and stuff of like this, it's going to be you know very you know joyous, anticipating stuff of like this, and then there's you know some that uh, that have fallen away, that uh, you know the laws or the unbelieving, denying and stuff. Like this. They're going to be hateful and vicious and stuff of like this, but so there's going to be, you know, a lot of divisions in that stuff. Because, I mean, you're going to have the rapture, which is going to happen very soon. And then, of course, uh, you got uh, Arm Armageddon and stuff like this. And uh, 
the devil, he's he's very manipulative and mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, he he's very powerful in his wording and stuff. Because for him to take one third of heaven against God, a place that has no concept of you know ghettos and slums and stuff, it's a perfect world. Mm -hmm. But he was able to get. I mean, so he's very good at what he does and stuff. And he, I mean, he did it in the perfect Garden of Eden, and he did it to to Jesus Christ. that did absolutely nothing wrong and stuff. So it's it's going to be very trickery and stuff, very hateful and stuff. But we have to stay the course and stuff in that. And in the book, I put in there where there's a, I mean, well, you mentioned because there's like false prophets and stuff like this or um, false messiahs, I should say. The last hundred fifty years, I make a list of those you know, in this book of of that, and also like how school shootings, you mentioned that a little earlier, and stuff, and natural disasters, I've got a list of those things, how things have escalated, all the hurricanes, and all the mm -hmm. uh, tidal waves, and, and things, and you know, just things are just progressing, and stuff, and all the anger, and the hate, and like the new norm, and stuff, just all the crazy stuff that's going on, so I mean, it's, it's we're at that point where it's just really, um, I can just imagine what the days of Noah was because we're pretty much in it. Yeah, it's a tumultuous time in history, that is for sure. David Saiga has written a fascinating book. It is called End Time Prophecies Amplified. He has been interested in the study of prophecies for the end of time for more than three decades now. He has had persistent questions. He's had a quest for the truth. And he is asking you to take a look at what Apostle John had to say, and he spells it out and talks about it and analyzes it and explains it very thoughtfully in this amazing book. Dave, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your time and your thoughts and the time you took to craft this book as well. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight. <laughs>